Hey, Harvey, if you could just go sit over there. Uh, the live show is started, and people would like to see you there. Sit. Sit where? In the chair there, the one facing the camera for the live show. Oh, okay. What's a, what's a live show? So it's like a theater performance where people can watch through the camera that's in front of you. Oh, it sounds like it must involve some magic. Hopefully the good kind of magic, not that cultist robe-wearing magic. I tell you, those cultists, they get in your town, they'll run them up pretty soon, they'll be opening up portals to other worlds and trying to bring Elder Gods in to destroy everything. I tell you, there's only one solution for that. I'm a learned man, but sometimes you just gotta crack them over the head with your cane. In the middle of a ritual, that'll just break things up, knock some sense into them. That's what I'm saying. So this is the internet, you say? Well... Hi everyone, I'm Harvey Walters and welcome to another It's Live live show. These are sort of a thing that happens every second Wednesday, except when they don't. <laughs> and mostly they don't. <laughs> That's what Rodney's been telling me anyway. But uh, the next one should be, when's the next one? Let me see here. Oh, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. The next one is scheduled for November 11th. It's 7.30 Eastern time. <laughs> what are the odds of that though, right? <laughs> Not likely. So Rodney's just setting a few things up over there, and he'll be taken over in a moment, but it's near Halloween, and the portal opened up in this timeline. I thought I'd pop in, because this channel really started with a little retelling of some of my past adventures with some of my friends. That was kind of special. You know, Answers of Madness is a... Well, sometimes they got it right. Sometimes they embellish things. Some things. Some terrifying things. They don't even bother to cover, which is probably for the best. But I know, uh, I know we all appreciate it. Appreciate you watching this channel and supporting it over the years, from its humble beginnings to its, um, well, its humble middles, I guess, is where we are now, isn't it? <laughs> Who knows where, where this will end up? No one knows the ending, do they? Although I know what I have to do next. I have to get back through that portal. Before it closes, I'll be stuck here for centuries. I've got some things in my timeline I've got to fix. I mean, your own timeline here, it's got a few things it needs fixing too, for that matter, but one thing at a time. So, chin up, stay safe, keep an eye out for cultists, crack them over the head if you have to. All right, Rodney, time for you to take over. I, I gotta, get, gotta get out of here. See you later, folks. Yeah, that's all right, Harvey, just watch your head there through the portal. Yeah, no, it's, get, don't forget your cane. All right. All right, folks, I'll be right there. Just got to make sure Harvey gets through. Yeah, okay, the portal's closing. Nothing seems to have gotten through. That's, that's probably for the best. See you, Harvey. Okay. Well, nice having a special guest drop by for a special Halloween episode. Now it's time for me to get back, back into the swing of things. One second, folks. A couple, of, a couple of more things. Closing a portal turns out not nearly as easy as you'd think. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, well, huh. well, welcome to another It's Live live show. I, sorry about my hair. It snowed earlier this morning and still it's pretty cold in the house and it hasn't quite melted yet, but I'm sure that'll <laughs> clear up soon enough. Well, listen, if you're ever unsure if there's a live show happening, you can always check the watchitplayed.tv website. Let me just bring it up here and I'll show you. So you can see just how reliable... Oh, wait a second. There's something i got to change here. It looks like Harvey was... Okay, no, he was messing with things a little bit. Uh, the, um... Let's see. Yeah, sorry for all the portal sounds you probably heard there. <laughs> so here you go. This is the watchitplay.tv website. It gives you a schedule of what's going on. You'll notice here on the 28th, there is no live show scheduled. Because I just said, look, the way things have been... Don't bother scheduling it. If we can make it happen, we will. So there, this is happening right now. But everything else for this week is, is happening. There'll be another tutorial video tomorrow. And we'll also have a call to the news on, uh, on the 30th. And that'll wrap up October. But uh, yes, good to be having another, another live show. I've missed these. I've missed all of you. And we have a few other fun things planned along with our mystery guests. We also have a contest we're going to do. We'll talk about the contest in just a moment, but first, I want to remind everyone, if you want to ask a question during the live show, the easiest way to do it is like this. You put question in all caps, and then just after that, write your question. 
Now, Andrea, normally, my daughter normally helps. She monitors in remotely and helps collate the questions together. She's busy working, which is wonderful. She's got a job and she's working, so she's not here to help with the, uh, the questions. So I'll be just going through them manually, like just in the good old days, and uh, catching up with your questions as we get through the live show. But before we get to those questions, I'll be doing some other things, but feel free to put your questions in the comments right now and start collecting them together. I'm just going to take off my watch so it doesn't rattle the whole time. Oh, look at this. Over here, a little, little memento of, of Harvey. For those of you, maybe, who don't, don't understand or recognize the connection that, that Harvey Walters has to the channel, uh, Mansions of Madness, the first edition, was the very first gameplay and first series on the channel, and it wasn't even on this channel. <laughs> it was on my Rodney J. Smith channel, which is still active. It's been a little dormant of late. I used to record uh, vlogs on it up until, well, I had some vlogs this year as well, but it's been a long while. The vlogs, the vlogs, the vlogs, the vlogs are coming back, but you'll also find on there the original Mansions of Madness videos, along with some other old videos <laughs> of other things, non-board gaming related. But uh, yeah, and that was a really formative kind of first experience. It was my first attempt to try to create some kind of content for the channel. And it was, um, it was a really fun, invigorating experience for me. And it felt like, I felt like I was finding something I could do and contribute to the hobby that was meaningful to me and seemed to be meaningful to other people. Actually, I think I have a little video here. Yeah, there's, there's, here's a video clip from that first series, there's Luke's young hand moving Harvey Walters right there. Now, he wasn't painted at that time. He's now uh, painted up. But, uh, yeah, Harvey Walters. Wow. And there he is. There's, uh, there's, a, there's a nice uh, artist uh, rendition of, of Harvey Walters there. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, so, yeah, and we also we shot a playthrough video of uh, Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition as well. And that's the edition that you can still buy today and certainly the one I would recommend you seeking out if you were trying to find uh, Mansions of Madness these days. Uh, okay, so we went over asking a question, how to ask a question. Oh, I should mention, we have a sponsor for these, for these shows. Let me bring up the, uh, the sponsor, because there's some cool new things on the sponsor's site. So Board Game Arena is our sponsor, and they've added, I think, four or five new games since the last time we did a live show. So they've been very busy. Kingdom Builder is on there. I don't think Kingdom Builder was on here last time. It, that might have been the last one that was added. Seven Wonders Duel is now available, the very popular Seven Wonders Duel as well as Mr. Jack, another popular, I mean, a lot of popular games here. Turn the Tide is not one I'm familiar with. I don't know that one, but this one you're probably familiar with. If not, this is just really kind of blown up. The Crew, or Die Crew in German. Very popular trick-taking game that has, kind of like Mansions of Madness, has various scenarios. So every t it's a very uh, fully cooperative, but every time you play, what you're trying to accomplish as a team changes and it gets more and more challenging as you go on. I've played about I think 50 or 55 games come in the in the box and I believe my family and I have played 30 of those games and really really enjoy it. So there's the crew. So Board Game Arena is a website you can go to and play all these games legitimately. All these games are licensed with the publisher so you can go on here you can find uh, friends to play with or if you have somebody you, you want to play with you can invite them to join you for a game. So there's Seven Wonders Duel right here. You can open this up and you can go in and actually play the game live. Here's a little video in this corner here you can see of uh, an example of people playing. So it uses all the original artwork and the components. It'll be very f familiar to you and if you haven't played the game before then you can actually uh, learn it here and play it. There's actually a video uh, explanation. Prob nope, not me. <laughs> oh, Board Game Arena, my lovely sponsor. It's a wonderful video from Rules Girls, but it, which is lovely. It just always catches me by surprise. I sometimes hope it'll be my video and it's somebody else's. But Rules Girls does a great job, and, and I'm sure you'll have no trouble learning from this video. But if, if you have a little trouble, you can also pop over to the Watch It Played tutorial video. I should really check those before I click on them. But yeah, so that is... That's a little message from our sponsor who helps support the, uh, the live shows here, which we really appreciate. And there's ways that you can support as well during the live show if you want. Uh, in the links of the description of this video, you will find links to the Watch It Played Game Shelf poster, which you can now acquire from Amazon.com. So it's much easier to purchase than it used to be. And there's also Teespring stuff. So there's t-shirts, sweaters, cups. Make sure you order the right size. I have had trouble lately ordering sizes from Teespring, and I don't... It's not Teespring's fault. I just failed to double check, and I've now ordered twice t-shirts from other creators and I've gotten smalls. I, I'm not a small and they don't fit me when I order them small. So be careful. 
Careful your sizes, check those. Yeah, you can also find some promos, different promos we featured over the years uh, on the channel. You can find those over at our Pod, Pod Pledge store. And during the live show, if you want to, you can super chat. That's right, there's a little dollar sign button there by the comments. And you can ask your question with a super chat if you want or leave a comment and I'll do my very best to catch those super chats and uh, give you a little shout out. I'll be trying to do that while I'm monitoring everything that's going on. So hopefully I don't miss any. And if I do miss something, I'll log them so that next time I can come in here and on the next live show, give you a shout out and make sure your question gets answered. All right. Oh yeah, I mentioned there was gonna be a contest. There is a contest going on right now for during the live show. So if, you're, if you don't participate now during this live show while it's live, you won't be able to participate. So I'll keep this short for anyone who's watching this after the fact so they're not seeing something that they can't win. But this is not the core game of Blood Rage. This is the digital expansion pack that's physical. I did not explain that very well. It's a good thing I don't explain things for a living. <laughs> let, me, let me see if I can show you what I, I can show you what I mean. This will be this will be more clear if I show you. Hold on, one sec. Okay, so hopefully right now you are looking at the Kickstarter page for Blood Rage Digital, the digital implementation. Well, with this, they also had some physical rewards. All of these physical rewards. Uh, monsters, the stag clan, sculpted clan tokens, bases, all this additional stuff, the gods, everything is in here. And uh, I want to offer this to one of you during this live stream. So all you have to do to enter, it's very simple. You'll find a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to, it should be called like the Blood Rage Halloween Contest. If you go there, you'll have to enter a code. The code is the last name of the designer of Blood Rage. So go find the designer of Blood Rage, put their last name in, and you can win this. Now again, you can't play this without Blood Rage, but this would be a nice upgrade if you already have Blood Rage or if you're thinking of getting Blood Rage. I was sent two copies. I bought, I backed it, and I don't know why they sent me two. They sent me two accidentally, so I want to give one away to one of you. So thanks to Cool Me or Not for helping to sort of sponsor this this contest and we'll do the draw for this at the end of the episode as long as I don't forget. I need to write that down so I don't forget. <laughs> I'm gonna maybe forget, I hope not. All right, so then there's the other thing I wanted to show you. This was kind of strange, I guess, but I think hopefully kind of cool. Harvey, I'm gonna have to get you to stand to the side there for a moment. Oh, I should also just check the chat quickly to make sure no one's saying, hey, by the way, none of this is working and we can't hear anything. No, everything seems fine, <laughs> okay, which is a wonderful, a wonderful thing to find out when you're uh, 17 minutes into the beginning of your live show. Mark Livergood, thank you so much for the super chat. Cheers to you for that. I really appreciate the support. Thank you, Mark. Very kind. Uh, I don't know if you have a question here. If not, that's fine. I appreciate the support. Wonderful to get that. So what I want to show you now is something that came in the mail. Uh, this, this happens occasionally. I don't get a lot of unsolicited content because I'm very specific about the games that I want to feature and until I'm pretty sure I want to feature it, I don't ask for copies or anything. This is something a little different though. This is more of like promotional materials for a game. And I've only seen this done a couple of times as a board game media creator. Uh, one of them was from Boards and Dice. They had a game kind of set in the 80s and they sent like a, a Walkman, an actual old style Walkman and a cassette tape and you play it and you heard like a little bit of a story element. It was all kind of just marketing materials for this game, but it was really clever and unique and they went out of their way to do something special. So another company has done the same thing here. And I said, they said, we want to send this to you. And I said, look, you can send it. I want to show it on the live show. Is that all right? And they said, that's great. So let's look at it together. I haven't actually gone into this yet. So we're going to, we're going to see it together for the first time. I have another camera angle though, that I can use. That I think will be a little better for this. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this will work. Let me get the uh, box in here. Okay. Excellent. All right, and I see that David Waybright says, hey, by the way, none of this is working. It's a good thing I love you, David Waybright, or I ban you. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's open this up. All right, so inside it says, dear, dear Rodney. Well, that's always a nice way to start a letter. Uh, let me see if I can get this to focus a little better since we're in the, in the box. All right, that, that should be a little better. All right, so it says, Dear Rodney, thank you for accepting one of our press kits. Please note there's an embargo. Okay, so they don't want anyone talking about the game or reviewing anything until October 15th. Good. <laughs> it says, we're in the clear. We're well past that. Never break embargo dates. Okay, so we've got a little, uh, oh, very cool. Ooh, like a waxed sealed envelope. That's 
That's interesting. When's the last time you got a wax sealed envelope? I bet you Harvey Walters probably got a couple of those in his, in his day. And I hope there isn't anything in here I'm not supposed to be showing. All right, let's see. I don't see, all right. Em envelope's empty. Now I'm not gonna read all of this. Oh, there's a, <laughs> I think I just showed a code. <laughs> I think I just showed a, a code for the game. So someone's probably gonna steal that. Live internet. Uh, okay, Dear Hunter, I hope that you remember well the conversation we had at our last meeting. So there's some story element. I'm not gonna read this whole thing to you because I know you don't wanna, you don't want me to read all of this material. But there's some very cool kind of fluff background story. There is a digital edition of the game here, which <laughs> one of you now has. Uh, okay, wanted poster for Dracula. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Very authentic. Suspected of warmongering heresies, dark arts, murder, most foul, sorcery, witchcraft, and more. Any information to be given to the Director of Criminal Investigations, Great Scotland Yard. Or any police station by order of Her Majesty the Queen. They're not too fussy. They just want to catch them. Wanted dead. Very cool. I like that. We've got what looks like maybe some posters. Yeah, some little, some little posters to go with. Very creepy. Very Halloween. That's the other thing, too. I kind of thought this would be fun to open up on Halloween. Oh, maybe Harvey Walters has wormed his way into this game. That's a little bit of a Harvey Walters flair to it. I always, I had this theory that Harvey Walters has traveled through time. You know, yes, we've seen him in Mansions of Madness, but he's probably popped through portals, come into other timelines like he did here today, and, and done other, other investigations as he chased these cultists everywhere. I would think Dracula would be somebody Harvey would be concerned about. Welcome to the hunt. Please find the following provisions to aid you in your fight. Vial of, if I find a vial of human blood in here, I'm going to be very concerned. The garlic, that's probably fine. Rose petals, that's no problem. Vampire teeth, as long as I don't have to touch them, okay. Lavender essential oils, oh, fancy. Yeah, okay, let's see. Oh, this is cool. The book, Bram Stoker's Dracula. It looks like they've aged it. Look, it's, it's been clawed through. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty slick. I do like that. I do like that. That's something that's like worth keeping. Some of this marketing material, you know, like what am I really going to do with this? But this, I like that. I like that. Very nice. Oh my gosh. So yep, there's some uh, vampire teeth in here. I don't want to find the blood in here. I just hope there's no, there's no blood. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Is this going to open? Let me see. Sorry, I have to pull this aside. This must open. It's got to be like a... Yep. Oh, neat. Actually, it's a compass. Right. So this is, this is, by the way, this is for a digital version of the game Fury of Dracula, which again, one of you knows right now because you've loaded it, installed it on your computer at this point. <laughs> and, um, and this is a game, it's a one versus many where the, many of the players are hunting Dracula, who's being played by another player. I've never played the board game version. I have friends who, who swear up and down by it. Jamie from the Secret Cabal Game Podcast loves it. Chris Miller, all that gang from the Cabal love that game. I've just never had a chance to play it. I mean, I suppose I've had the chance, but I've never taken the chance to play it. So the compass kind of makes sense. Oh, look in here, we do have garlic. Now this box has been sitting here for a while. Yeah, it's probably good, probably. Again, practical gift, thank you. <laughs> I can use that. I can cook with garlic. Okay, no vials of blood yet. What do we got here? A little, uh, all right, I don't, I'm concerned. I don't know what's gonna spill out of this thing. Let's see what we got. Oh. Oh, look at this, <laughs> a crucifix, very cool. I have to say, I am a big fan of adding thematics to a game, I mean, outside of the game. So, uh, you know, we played, uh, I love telling the story, it's an old story, but uh, Andrea and, and her friends, uh, we got together, we played Mansions of Madness. I was playing the Overlord in the first edition, so I dressed up all kind of like spooky and dark, and they dressed up as the different characters they were playing. And I love doing that. I love like bringing the game from outside the game into it. It just, if everyone embraces it, it can be a lot of fun. Now, obviously, if someone's not really into that or they feel like they don't want to act or have to put on a, a role, then that's not going to be fun for them. But if you have a group that really wants to do it, it, it can be a lot of fun. All right, so we've got some, <laughs> some fizzy fangs. I'm going to assume, yes, this looks like some sweets. <laughs> that's always nice. Sweets are good. I'm just thankful there's been no vial of blood in here. That's, that's my thing. Oh, we got, the, we got the rose petals. Very cool. I actually didn't know that rose, and look, I'm gonna expose my, my lack of knowledge of the Dracula lore here. I didn't realize rose petals were one of, one of the things that Dracula didn't care for. 
Would have thought he would have been all over the roses. He's kind of a seductress type of monster, right? What else we got in here? We got straw. Does he not like straw? Oh, a steak. <laughs> Dangerous. Surprised I got through customs, but uh, yep. Can you imagine if customs opened this and saw all these items in here? I'd probably be getting a, a visit from somebody. We've got a, oh, very nice, a mirror. Cool. Hi, everybody. There's, there's you. <laughs> a mirror. This thing just keeps going and going. They really, okay, yep, there it is. There's the, just think about that again. If customs had found a vial that said human blood in it, you, you think I, I, I probably wouldn't be doing this live stream right now. I would be, I'd be somewhere explaining myself. Oh, it's leaking. Okay, it's leaking. Let's try to not to have it leak on the, uh, the watch it played table. I'm going to um, take the DNA of some poor citizen and just relocate it. One second, everybody. I'll be back. Oh, human DNA. Lovely. All right, let me just... Uh, it's not like I, I, I... Not really prepared for this part of the live show, everybody. Okay, this doesn't actually... I'm sure this is not human blood. I mean, I'm not going to check it. I'm not going to send it to a lab to find out. But it's a nice, nice, nice prop. Okay, I think we had one item left there. Yes, we have the, uh, the lavender oil. I think that is everything. All right, that is everything. And let me tell you something. That is not, not too shabby. I have to say, that is a pretty good little promotional box of items. If I wasn't intrigued by Fury of Dracula... I'm a little more intrigued now. So that's, that's very cool. And as I understand it, I don't know if the game is out yet or if it's just a wish list item on Steam. Let me, um, I might actually be able to bring that up. Let me see if I have it here. Uh, I think I can share it with you at the same time. Yeah, Fury of Dracula Digital Edition. Planned release date November. Okay, so you can add it to your wish list right now if you want to. Will this play? Let's see. Uh, let's maximize this a little bit. You're not going to hear anything? All right, actually, you might be hearing something right now. Let's see, pick your characters. Oh, that's cool. I like those visuals. Dracula himself. Yeah, that looks cool. I like the UI on that. Very nice. Yeah, so it looks like you can add this to your wish list now and then potentially uh, pick it up later. All right. Awesome. Oh, whoopsie. You don't want to see all that. All right. So that's, <laughs> that's, I've now made a mess here on the live show, which is fine. It's fine. And you know what now? Now it's time to get to, uh, to some of your questions. Let's do that, shall we? We've got to the question portion of the live show. Let's jump in here and see if I can find some questions in the live chat. I will... Jump over here. Mm, okay. Yeah, here we go. Here's the question. Let's, let's, I'm going to scroll right up to the top. See if I can find. Remember, if you want to ask a question, all you need to do is put question in all caps and then put your question afterwards, and I will do my best to find those questions and answer them to the best of my ability. Also, I have some other questions from the BGG Guild, which I can also pull up as well, and we will go through, through those. So Amanda Panda asks, what's your favorite promo from the BGG store? My favorite promo. I, I'm just going to say a couple quick ones that come into my mind, and these are silly. Uh, this one might seem silly. I love the metal cubes for terraforming Mars. Uh, they have this copper, silver, and gold uh, cubes to replace the credits, basically. Or not the credits, but the units of measurement in the game. Is that right? Yeah, you know, it's a measurement like for tracking your resources and also your credits. But anyway, I just think I like them a lot. They're very substantial. They've got weight to them. And the cubes that come in base terraforming Mars aren't great, frankly. So they're, they're a nice upgrade. But there's a lot of really nice stuff over at the BGG store. And that, I, I understand why that store is so popular at the conventions. When you go to the you know, Gen Con or Essenspiel, the lineup for the BGG store is, is, is quite long a lot of the times. So people are able to go there and buy the, the promos and not have to pay shipping. That's a nice uh, advantage there. But they're not able to bring everything, obviously, from the store, so it's a limited selection. But it's busy the whole time because there's just a lot of neat things. Like a game I really enjoy is, is Raja the Ganges. There's been some really cool promos that I've only found through going to the BGG store that add neat little, little twists to the game. So, yeah, I do recommend checking that out. Uh, Castles of Burgundy before they released that new version that has all the expansions in it. 
there were a lot of those expansions that were only available as a promo. And again, the BGG store was a great place to pick them up. Another fantastic thing they've added there is the BGG uh, Geek Up Bits. These are things created by Board Game Geek to complement the game. So they're improved bits for Quacks of Quedlinburg, Wingspan, um, Orléans. They've got these amazing upgrades coming for Watergate. Watergate's a, a favorite game of mine, and they've made some really cool upgraded pieces for that as well. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things to, to pick from there. I always just recommend people go in the, over there, check what's new, but also it's fun sometimes to go through the back catalog. You will find a whole bunch of things. Look up your favorite game and see what you can find there. And if you want to help support the channel, you can also use the affiliate code, which isn't linked below, but if you open up any of the BGG store videos that I've done, I think we, put, we would put one out this, this month, you'll find a link there. If you use that affiliate link, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but a portion of the proceeds come back to support Watch It Played. So Mark Cook would like to know. Hi, Mark Cook. That's Mark Cook from Aircon, if I know my Mark Cooks. And he says, what are some tutorials you have coming up? Well, let's see. Uh, I just released Dune Imperium, which I was very excited to be able to release finally and share with everybody. Uh, and I hope people have had uh, some fun checking that game out. Then I have one coming out tomorrow. Mark, I'll spoil it here for you and just you, so everyone else, cover your ears. Uh, Honey Buzz, the, the uh, tutorial for Honey Buzz, which I have, I have it over here. Let me grab it off the, the shelf. It's, it's a little box, not a little box, but like uh, smaller than the traditional Ticket to Ride style boxes. But this thing is jammed packed with components especially because uh, this has some upgraded components in it. Now, you won't see those upgraded components in the tutorial video. I always try to just use the standard components, but as I understand, you can get the upgraded components separately. So even if you didn't, I think it was a Kickstarter originally, even if you didn't back the Kickstarter, you can still, I believe, get those upgraded components. Don't quote me on that. But it's a, it's a really lovely production. This is from Elf Creek Games. And uh, to repeat myself, a lovely production. They do a really nice job. It's the same with... Uh, uh, Atlantis Rising, second edition. They did that as well, and I was really impressed with the quality of all the components, the artwork, everything. This one has like all the different little honey bits. There's like little, not gummies, but they're like very soft, kind of honey-like uh, components for that. The upgraded components you can get, like these really nice thick cardboard pieces come with it, but there's also uh, wooden upgraded components and, and all kinds of stuff here. I won't go through all of it, but anyway, the, the main thing is it's a very lovely production, and I think I think if people check it out, I think you'll find the gameplay is, gameplay is quite intriguing as well. Very different than anything I can think of. The way it combines kind of building your hive with the other elements of the game. Some elements of the game, of course, would be familiar worker placement style thing. But what you're doing and how you're doing it and what gives you the points, kind of this pattern building thing, unique. So thanks for asking. Other games we have coming out, I, I prefer not to say. I try to only say games that I'm scripting. I'm about, oops, knocked my mirror. I'm about to start scripting my next game, uh, but you'll have to keep an eye out to see what's next. So from Fudgeon asks, what is your favorite not Mansions of Madness Halloween themed game? All right, let me look at my shelf here. I think, I, th I think Mysterium is a good one. Now, Mysterium Park just released, and I haven't played it enough to know which one I prefer. I, I like both games. I think you can have both in your collection. One of them is definitely faster to play and easier to teach. So, and that's Mysterium Park. So that's appealing, I think, if you're playing and you have a shorter period of time to play or you just want to get that Mysterium fix without all the, the trimmings. But if you really want that full experience, then Mysterium is, is the way to go. Another uh, Halloween-themed style of game or spooky style of game would be a Paranormal Detectives, which is a little bit more like a party game. Sort of, is it? A party game? It feels like a party game because the things you're doing in it are very party-like. You're giving clues by like twisting wires together or holding someone's hand and making them draw something. So it feels like a party game, but it's got a lot of de deduction in it. You're trying to solve effectively a crime. We have a tutorial video for that if you'd, if you'd like to check it out. So uh, yeah, I think those are two decent picks for Halloween. What are some of your favorite Halloween games? Feel free to put in the comments. If you've got some other Halloween-themed games that you really enjoy, feel free to post them there. I'm Fury of Dracula would probably be appropriately themed game, I would think. <laughs> All right, let me jump down here to the next questions. Mark Cook would like to know, are you still planning on getting up to 100 vlogs? I absolutely am. I'm not quitting. I try not to quit things I start. I will tell myself sometimes I'm taking a break. Sometimes those breaks take a little while, <laughs> but I am, 
I am planning to keep, I'd love to get another vlog, at least one more out this year, just to even summarize what has been going on all this time with no vlogs. There's surely some things have happened. Well, yeah, th some things have happened to be sure. <laughs> so it might be nice to do kind of a, maybe even a, a, an extended vlog that covers what's been happening in the last few months. But I, I do intend to get to 100 vlogs. That's what I said I was going to do. I'm going to do it. It's just been an interesting year for everybody, I think. All right, I want to ask, answer a couple more questions here in the live chat. And I'm going to go to a couple that were posted in preparation for this video that came from BGG and we'll bounce back and forth a little bit. Kabuki Kid asks, oh no, sorry, Andrew Hegel asks, favorite pumpkin face for carving? I am boring as all get out when it comes to pumpkin faces. I have tried, I've gotten out like the fancy ones and tried to like, you know, carve something kind of wacky and crazy. But my favorite is the traditional triangle eyes, little nose, and then the big mouth with a little t the teeth, you know, the big teeth. I, I just the jaggly tooth smile. That, that's my favorite pumpkin face. I just, it makes me happy when I see it. I, I suppose on Halloween it should be like a terrifying and horrifying, but I don't know. I just like the happy, happy pumpkin face. That's my favorite. All right. So then Kabuki Kid asks, do you like watching horror movies during the Halloween season? What are some favorite scary movies? Now, you've sort of, sort of stolen the thunder here from, from Jackie, who asked the same question to me in the BGG Guild. So I'll kind of combine these, these answers together. I am not a horror fan. I didn't grow up watching a lot of horror movies, so it never kind of got in my blood, one might say. Uh, and I'm, I'm really not a fan of gory violence. It's weird because I don't mind violence, action, shooting, guns, blazing, all that kind of stuff. But the stuff that's meant to be, like to really gross you out, that doesn't appeal to me at all. So that's a lot of horror movies. Now I have seen a few that I really like. Um, the Conjuring, I really liked that one. I felt that was like a more suspenseful, grounded, and yet uncomfortable, unnerving movie. So I, I liked that one. Can I think of any others? I watched The, the Shining recently, and I was very disappointed. Uh, I had seen it when I was like much younger and just only had fractional memories of it. But I, I read the book recently, and then when I watched the movie, I was really disappointed. I don't want to spoil things for people. Um, so just don't listen for the next 30 seconds. But I found the characters were all written or performed very differently in the movie compared to in the book. In the book, I felt the father was a much more sympathetic character, at least initially, and then became kind of corrupted by everything. But in the movie, he's just kind of a jerk the whole time. And I wasn't able to like... I don't know, feel the, the loss of this relationship that was being lost between him and the rest of his family because he didn't really deserve to have the relationship in the first place. Anyway, this is not a uh, movie review uh, show. <laughs> but anyway, I, um, I don't watch a lot of horror movies. I'm pretty much in the dark on most horror stuff. I liked Get Out a lot. Is that a horror movie? It's, I think so, right? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I like Get Out a lot. Okay, so let me, let me go over to... A couple of the questions that came in from BGG, and we'll come back to your live questions. So feel free to keep posting live questions. And don't forget, at the end of this episode, I'm saying this aloud so I don't forget, we will do the draw for the Blood Rage. Digital, physical components from the digital, but doesn't matter. You know what I was talking about. All right, so let's go to the next question. So the first question, Coralie. Oh, right, I was going to try to think about the answers to these questions before we started. Do you have a favorite theme park themed game? This is how many games we have in our hobby now that you can ask questions this specific and there's actually a bunch of games to pick from. I mean, that is what an incredible, awesome thing for all of us who love this hobby, who are invested in it deeply, invested in it like financially, <laughs> like we spend a lot of money on it, but also just invest in it with our time and we want to spend time playing games with our friends and things because there are just so many games to choose from whatever you're into, there's probably a game about it. There's probably four or five. If you're into some of the more broader themes, there's probably like 20 or 30 or 100 games like, if you like zombies, there's a lot of games to pick from. <laughs> or if you like trading in the Mediterranean, you've got, it's a potpourri of options. I don't know, I, Meeple Land, I just recently featured that. So that one's kind of on my mind. And it seemed to have a very positive reaction from people who were watching the tutorial video. I thought that was a really cool theme park game. I haven't played a lot of theme park game 
games. So I, my answer is bad. I don't know. I'll say Meeple Land for now. Uh, unfair. I never played that, but that's not a themed game. There was one. I mean, it's like Tiny Epic Dinosaur, a theme park game. Or any of the, like Dinosaur Island. Is that a theme park game? Because then I would include those games as ones that I enjoy. They're like kind of the more horror version of <laughs> the theme park. But uh, what are some ones I'm not thinking of? Because I think there's a bunch. I want that. That's something else in the comments. Post that. So I can go back later because I like to go back and watch the, read the comments afterwards. I want to see all the theme park games that I'm not thinking of. There's one from Yellow that came out a few years ago that was very really popular, which I'm forgetting the name of. I never had, never played it. Someone is right now typing that one in the comments, I'm sure. Please do. All right, the next question here. Winter is coming from Vincent Vignoya. Snowblower or shovel? Well, for me, it's shovel. Always shovel. And yes, winter is coming. You can see the snow never quite melted out of my hair this morning. We had snow on the ground today. We did. But I don't own a snowblower. I thought about getting one. But it's a lot of maintenance, frankly. I mean, something goes wrong, you got a lot of fixing to do. A shovel, pretty easy to fix. Usually you replace it. That's how you fix a shovel when it goes busted. Um, it's good exercise. We don't get tons and tons and tons of heavy snowfall. We get lots of consistent snow. And so as long as I stay on top of it, it's not too bad. And we will get plowed out. We have a neighbor uh, who does that. It's part of it. It's like a job. It's like a side job. Uh, he'll come plow out several of the different neighbors. So... Uh, if I didn't have that, then I would probably have to consider getting a snowblower for those days that are really bad when Christy needs to get out of the driveway to get to work. So good question. Winter is coming. Shovel for me. Tata Dare. In the spirit of Halloween, when has a game made you feel the most like someone else? What a great question. And this is another one. I, if you have answers to these questions, I'd love to see your answers to these as well in, in the comments here because that's kind of a unique question. When we play games, we're often embodying the role of something. Sometimes very abstractly, you know, especially in those merchant in the Mediterranean type games. I don't always feel like I'm a merchant, but that's kind of the idea, right? That's the trappings of the theme. When do I feel the most like the person I'm playing as? I suppose the easiest answer would be in a role-playing game. Uh, I won't cheat and stick with role-playing. I'll try to think of a board game, but I think a, a role-playing game really does ask you to become the character that you're playing as and maybe even talk in their voice and care about their background and their history. A lot of the times, you know, the back history of a character in a game might be there to give you context, but it doesn't actually manifest itself in any kind of meaningful way as you play the game. For a board game, I'm just kind of looking at my shelves. I mean, it's very difficult for me not to say Mansions of Madness. I think that's a good example. Descent. The dungeon crawl style games, I think, do create the best opportunity for a player to feel like that character when they have a figure that represents who they are. It kinda, you sort of start to go, okay, he's got a cane. So I remember when I was playing as Harvey Walters, anytime there's an opportunity to give him a weapon, I try to get the 2 by 4 because that makes me think of a cane. It's the closest weapon. Like, I'm not going to give him a shotgun. I'm going to give him the 2 by 4 something he can whack the enemies with. You know what I mean? And then I, I think about how he would talk. I think about what he cares about, what he doesn't care about. I, you know, my, my little story for him is he just thinks cultists are almost like contemptuous. He doesn't take them real seriously. Like, why are they putting on these dumb robes? What do the robes have to do with anything? Why are they always wearing these hoods? Do they all shop at the same place? Like, he thinks, he looks on them as, with disdain and just wants to shoo them out of the way so we can get to the real problems, like the monsters that are coming through the portals. You know, he sees them as delusional, you know, bozos. Um, so all the, where'd that all come from? That's not anywhere in the, in the theme of the game, but that's, that's like the imagination that I, I brought to it. And I think a lot of us or some, I don't know if a lot of us do it, but I think it's something that, that when we tell stories about the games, we play games that have a story element, it's, it's natural to sort of think that way. Terraforming Mars doesn't make me feel like a, a, a multinational, uh, multi-billion dollar you know, co corporation, for example. Great game, but it doesn't give me those kinds of feelings. So next question. Ian from Scotland asks, you rewrite the rules for your scripts. So have you ever been approached to write the rules to a game? Right, so when I, when I do a tutorial video, for example, for Honey Buzz, I, I take the, the rule book, and uh, I, obviously I, I learn the game, I play the game, I write down any questions that, that I might have that maybe I felt the rules didn't cover, and then I start on page one, uh, or at least the, the game setup, and I just rewrite everything. I just go through the whole thing, I rewrite stuff, I move things around. If I think, okay, I don't need to say this part, so I'll leave that out because I'm going to cover it later. I just go through and I just you know, rewrite it all. Kind of in my own language, I try to find as, as succinct a way as possible to express it because I, I, I want to waste as little of your time as possible. But I don't, I don't want to go so fast 
that you lose a context for what's being shown. So it's a weird little balancing act there, which I try to hit and hopefully do most of the time. So have I ever been approached to write the rules to a game? No, I have been asked to review the rules to a game to see if I can find any concerns or problems. Uh, a few different companies have, have hired me to do that. But it's not something I really would want to do. Uh, rules writing is not an easy task. Uh, I would say rewriting the rules into a slightly better, maybe I say better, better for video, let's put it that way, version is much easier than having all the disparate parts of a game and trying to figure out how am I going to explain this to somebody. Like to just to craft an entire rulebook from scratch. Very challenging. Um, and a very important work in our hobby because uh, as much as there are videos like you find here and other places to learn how to play games, a lot of people, the rule book is where they're going to start. Especially if they're new in the hobby, they won't necessarily think to go looking online to find uh, videos. So a good rule book is one of the best advocates for our hobby in a lot of ways. Because if someone buys a game that looks really cool and they see these, they see these cool buzzing bees and the, they see the bear and the raccoon and they think, oh, this is really cute and they see the back and all these beautiful components, they get excited to play and then they open up the game and they start reading the rules and they're just like, what is, I don't understand, what are they talking about? They didn't explain this thing and they're asking me to turn to page 10, I'm, I'm, I'm still on page 3, why do I have to hop over there? And they get to go to page 10, I have to jump to page 7 now, why, you know, what are they talking about? There's no examples. That will kill not just that person's experience with Honey Buzz, but potentially their experience with every game. Because they go, oh, this is what it's all about. I don't want to do this. I'll do something else with my time, thank you very much. Right? So a good rule book is, is very important. And um, I certainly believe and, and hope that the videos are a helpful complement to that. Sometimes, maybe even a replacement. But we really need to make sure that the rule books in our, in our games are as good as they possibly can be. Sitting Duck would like to know, is the Momenten Climbers feud between you and Chaz for real or just a gag? Sitting Duck, there is no feud more real than uh, the conflict between Chaz and I over whether or not the top 10 show that he hosts here on Watch It Played, whether it should be called Momenten, a ridiculous name, or Climbers, which is way easier to say. And just, it's, it's, it's more sophisticated. It's not some silly play on words like Momenten. Very serious. We've had many very angry, uh, gut-wrenching arguments about this very serious matter. I mean, it, I just think of the things I, I would do to, to make that conflict end. I don't, you know, it's really very, very, very serious. Very serious. We haven't seen Chaz for a while. Uh, you know, in one of the top tens you saw, there'd been a little mishap with a time machine, and, and hopefully he'll find his way to that. But time machines are complicated, so. Who knows? I hope people have been enjoying the, the different top tens we've been doing. We have one hosted by uh, Chaz, one hosted by Paula Deming, and one hosted by Matthew Jude, and I pop in every now and then. We also kind of cross-pollinate amongst those different shows as well, and we try to tell little stories as we do. So I hope you've been enjoying those, those different and new additions to, to the channel. I know I personally have been enjoying them, partly because it helps me get a good handle on all the different games that are releasing. I can't possibly keep an eye on all the games that are releasing all the time, what people are buzzing about and excited about, and make videos all the time for those games. So I've found it's been harder for me to keep track of what's new and what's releasing, and I've actually found these videos that I watch on my own channel have been very helpful, and I hope they've been helpful to other people as well. Maybe to even find a few games that you haven't seen being talked about in other places. And this is the, so this is the last question for the BGG and Jack, Jack F. I'm so sorry, it's Jackie. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to pay for that. Jackie is not going to let me live that down. I'm so sorry, Jackie. Um, I already answered this question, though. And now let's go back over to your questions in the live chat. I haven't forgotten you. Let's get into a few more of your questions. And then we'll do our contest draw because I am not going to forget to draw for this game. I'm so going to forget. I'm not going to forget. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Question, question, question. So, uh, non-interesting name says, I did not realize this until Dune Imperium, but you were amazing at shuffling cards. How do you do it? Well, <laughs> thank you. That's very kind of you to say. I don't think I've ever been complimented for my card shuffling skills. I don't know that I'm particularly good at it, but I appreciate that you, you think so. Um, I think card shuffling is a handy, handy skill to develop if you're a board gamer, because you're going to be asked to shuffle a lot of games at some point, especially in that game, Dune Imperium, where it's a, a deck builder game and you have to shuffle regularly. Uh, James Patterson, question, was the sounds of a portal closing, was that the sounds of a portal closing or you getting out of a costume? I don't know what you're talking about, James. Very strange question for you to ask. Very strange. 
Matt's Verstrom asks, what are your favorite board game upgrades? So I mentioned one that I really like for Terraforming Mars, right? The, uh, the, the Metal Cube upgrades. Sticking to that game, when they upgraded the player mats so they'd actually be functional, that was a nice upgrade. Although I almost hesitate to call that an upgrade. I don't mean to pick on Terraforming Mars. But that game is, I felt, fundamentally flawed without those. Uh, as, soon as, they, as soon as they had, uh, once you could buy third party, it became a necessary purchase. Because if someone bumps that, I mean, you lose all track of all your records. And I know you think, well, how often are you going to bump a table? It just takes one little nudge and all the pieces move. So to me, that's almost not even an upgrade. That's like a necessary thing. When I look at my shelves, one of the things that I find to be a very helpful upgrade are actually custom inserts. Now, I know not everyone sees them as necessary. I don't see them as necessary for, own, for every game you have. But if there's a game you like to play a lot, a custom insert that keeps everything organized so you don't have to keep everything in baggies. That in fact, I grabbed this and I have not had a drink yet. That allows you to pop the components right out of the insert and drop them on the table and start playing. I love that. Because when I'm thinking, when I'm looking at my shelf and I'm thinking, well, what game do I want to play? Oftentimes I find that I don't have a lot of spare time. Uh, so I will be looking which one of these games is going to be eating into my game playing time with the setup time. And if there's two games I really want to play and one's easy to set up and one's not, which one do you think I'm going to play? So I, I like that. That's a, that's a good upgrade. I don't mind coins and things, but I, I will buy like generic coins now gen generally and just kind of keep them handy. So if I want to play a game that has cardboard, co cardboard, coins, cardboard coins and I want that kind of upgrade experience, then I can, I can use those. All right. Hopefully that helped answer that question. James Patterson would like to know, what are your favorite board game expansions? Hmm. Again, I'm looking at my shelf. I'm going to mention, it's, it's not an expansion, but this is on, the, on par with the uh, upgrades. So Dune Imperium, which was announced, uh, I really, I know I don't, off, I, I don't mind on the live show giving some opinions. I'm going to give an opinion here about Dune Imperium because it was, this was sort of made public and, and became a topic of conversation for a little while. But I uh, was on the Secret Ball Gaming podcast and mentioned to them that I had played Dune Imperium with some friends, enjoyed it so much that I felt like this might be my game of the year. Not that I make those kinds of declarations publicly, but in my head as I was playing it, I was thinking, this could be maybe the best game I've played this year. That's how much I enjoyed it. And uh, I think they did something really fantastic with the release of this game. Now, I want to say I've been paid to do the tutorial video. If you think in some respect that's biasing my opinion about the game, certainly please keep that in mind. I would tell you that it's not, but I understand, you know, be, be thoughtful about taking anyone's opinion at face value. But I, uh, I like that they released and offered a separate upgrade pack that replaces all the cardboard, not the cardboard, um, but the wooden cubes and wooden pieces with miniatures and other components as well. Other cardboard components re replaced with plastic upgrades. So if you want that deluxified experience, you can get it. If you don't want it, you don't have to pay for it. You can just buy the core game, which I think looks great on its own. I was not disappointed with the wooden cubes and everything that came with it. When I saw the upgrade pack, I was like, oh, well, I'm very happy that that's an option. So I think that's a really great way to do an upgrade pack. It's not always gonna be possible for every publisher to do it that way, but I like that people have the option and they can pick and choose. That was not the question. Favorite expansions. I'm looking, I'm looking at my shelves. And I have to be honest, I look at a lot of my shelves and I look, I, I go, it's the base game. That's the, the main thing I like about the games that I've, I've kept and keep on my shelf. Typically, it's the base game. Sometimes I'll grab expansions. Concordia has some expansions that I like. I like the Salt uh, expansion for that. Very good. Empires of the North has multiple expansions, but it's not like it's changing the gameplay dramatically. It's giving you new factions to play as. Those are great expansions. Games like Ashes, when those come up with expansions. Marvel Champions. I'm playing a fair bit of that right now with Luke. I like that there's several expansion packs you can get. But they aren't really dramatically changing the game. They're just giving you new heroes to play with, new enemies to face. So there's a very long-winded answer to a very simple question. <laughs> so hopefully, though, that, that sort of answered the question. All right. So coming down here through the uh, questions, let's see if I can find another one. Coralou would like to know, when will you convince BGG to open a Canadian warehouse so we can actually afford to buy Geek Up Bits? I know the shipping is very expensive, but as you can imagine, opening up a Canadian warehouse so that us Canadians can have cheaper shipping would also be very, very expensive. They would have to sell a lot of bits. 
to make that worthwhile. And uh, I don't see that happening anytime soon. It's just the challenge of shipping. Look, when I ship things, when I ship this contest giveaway, which I'm not going to forget to do, when I ship this, it's going to cost me a pretty penny to ship. It's probably going to be won by someone who lives in the U.S., but it, you could be anywhere, by the way, to apply for this. You can be anywhere in the world and I'll ship it to you. It'll be expensive. Uh, even if it's somewhere in the States that's relatively close by, as soon as it crosses the border, boom, it just gets pricey. It's the way it is. And it's kind of like incredible that you can actually ship something to somebody across the planet. So I never know exactly how much to complain because it's such an incredible gift to be able to do that in the first place. So, all right, coming down here through the questions. Sorry if I miss any ones. I'm trying to scan and not spend too much time looking at the questions. Again, normally Andrew would be here to help me collate these, but she, uh, she was busy this evening, so we're, we're doing it on the fly here. So Zane Emerson would like to know, were you ever into D&D or other role-playing games? No. Sort of, but no. The, the true answer is no. I didn't grow up playing D&D. I was fascinated by D&D. Uh, I grew up in a very conservative upbringing that believed that D&D was like the Satan, Satan's playground. It was going to corrupt me. I was maybe going to kill myself or my friends if I played or get into the dark art. A whole bunch of things. that They called it the Satanic Panic back then. This was in like the 80s. And uh, I, so I, it was never allowed in my home, just to be frank. But I was always fascinated by it. I had friends at school, of course, who were playing, and I would uh, steal away looks at the book. I'd ask to borrow the book, and I'd sneak it home, and I would read through. I was fascinated by the concept of taking a human being and defining them by all these traits and turning them into numbers. And it's just sort of like, it really triggered my imagination for all the possibilities of imaginative play that that could create. But it's funny that it, you know, engaged me so much. So much so that because I couldn't play d and I would sit at home and make up my own role-playing games based on what I believed they must be like. You know, I'd come up with stats for weapons and armor and all these things and classes and all this stuff that I kind of perceived from what I saw my friends doing. Now, I did get to play a couple of like quick one-off games of D&D with my friends, but they were very scattershot, very much under the cover of darkness. Uh, and um, it wasn't until my first game of Mouse Guard that was really kind of my first true role-playing experience. And I really want to show you the picture I have hung up on the wall. Can I do this without destroying my entire live shut? I can't, I'm gonna destroy the whole live setup here. That's what's gonna happen. Um, so I, uh, I was very fascinated by this game, Mouse Guard, and I had a friend who, Dan, Daniel Crane, who I knew was playing it, and he offered to run it f a game session of it for me very kindly, and I, I invited uh, Jamie Kagey from the Secret Ball Game Podcast and Chris Miller and his wife at the time, and we all played it. And uh, this, hopefully you can see, hopefully I'm pointing at the wall. Um, I can't tell, but this here is a picture that I had uh, commissioned and colored from that game that we played, because that was the, the sort of the power of that experience for me. Um, it was really, really special, because you know I'd spent all that time kind of fantasizing, dreaming about what a role-playing experience would be like, and then I had one for the first time, and it was everything I could have hoped it would be. You talked earlier, we had the question about, you know, what games make you feel like the character. We were solving these problems in this little mouse town. I was like a mouse for like two hours, and it was, it was fantastic, and it was a truly bonding experience with those friends, you know, and um, so I, 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 the thing is, it was never in my blood to begin with. I never had the habit of doing it. So all of it's still very foreign to me. It's not natural for me to go, oh, you know what, this, this afternoon let's play a role-playing game. To me that still feels like this weird world that I'm not completely comfortable in. Whereas it's very simple for me to go, let's crack it up in a board game. It could be a brand new board game I've never played before, and I, I, but I feel like I know the language of what we're doing. I'm much more comfortable in that space. Would I like to do more role-playing? Yes, that's why I bought like every D&D &D book that released since 5th edition, because the idea of it still intrigues me. Uh, and I'd still like to play. That was a long-winded question, but it was, I don't know, I guess I have, I, I have feelings about role-playing games. Like, I, I know there's, there's more I'd like to do in that space, and I just don't prioritize doing it. Similar to miniatures games. I'd like to play more miniatures games, and I don't prioritize doing it. Um, although, recently, I broke out uh, Warcry, and I've been putting that together. I see we, we got a, um, a donation. Wow, a very generous donation. Wow, an incredibly generous donation from uh, Keen Anvil for the shipping. That is, I am uh, a little speechless. That is incredibly generous of you. Thank you so much for that 
Um, <laughs> whew, I'm, uh, yeah, I don't even know how to react to that. Thank you, Keen. That was very, very, very kind of you to do. And that will go towards uh, the shipping of this. I will definitely not forget now, Keen. I will not forget now to make sure we do the draw for this at the end of this uh, live show. Wow. That is, that is, wow, wow. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Keen. That's really kind. Um, okay. M. Olson. Would you encourage others to start their own board gaming channels? Do you feel the scene is somewhat crowded? I've noticed channels merging, much like you and the Dice Tower have done. Well, that's a very interesting question. I, I don't think you mean me merging with the Dice Tower, but like Dice Tower's merged people, and, and I, I've been doing some work with Paula Deming and Matthew Jude and, and Chaz Marler. Would I encourage others? First, let's answer this in, in parts. Would I encourage others? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. If you feel that you have something that you have to express about the board gaming hobby, I would never want you to go, oh, there's too many people doing it. There's no room for me in this space anymore. Uh, my friend Joel Eddy from Drive Through Games, uh, another dear friend of mine, he, you know, he said something one time. I'm not going to get this quote right, but it doesn't matter. The quote doesn't matter. The point is, he feels a compulsion. He has to talk about games. That's in part why he does what he does. I'm sure he likes to put up a video and, and get some views for it and, and have it you know, be useful to people and that people care about what he has to say. But Joel Eddy has to talk about games. And he it has to get it out of him. I don't know if I'm, I, I'm not doing a good job of, of expressing it, but hopefully you get a sense of what I'm, I'm getting at there. There's something he has to talk about and wants to talk about and having his channel allows him to do that. I mean, I felt a similar compulsion when I started. I knew I wanted to be connected to the gaming community in some way. I wanted to talk about games and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to do something. And thank goodness I started um, because it, it sort of created this journey I'm on now. But I didn't have this journey in mind when I started. I just really wanted to talk about games, right, with people. And uh, I see another donation from uh, Ken, Ken Coaston. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for what you do, he says, and I love Table Talk. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. Ken, I love doing Table Talk. I actually, it's funny enough, we haven't done a Table Talk in a little while, but I was taking notes just last week. I had this idea for a Table Talk topic. And so Table Talk doesn't happen regularly. Sometimes it'll happen in spurts. You'll see a bunch of them, and then it'll like go away for a while. Table Talk's a weird animal because, uh, I have to come back to this other question in a moment, but it's a weird animal because I really only want to do Table Talks about topics that I feel strongly about, that I have, I have a perspective that I want to share, and that I'm looking for other perspectives on. I really like when I can offer a table talk topic, have a point of view, and then when I hear the responses people have when we do the follow-up table talk back, almost every time I get a perspective I would never have considered before, and now my ideas around things are broadened, right? And so my hope is to help broaden people's ideas, perspectives, and also have my own broadened. So, but finding those topics that really kind of get me inspired that way is not always, it's not going to happen every week. So I'm so glad. Thank you very much for the kind super chat and the support of the channel and for the kind words about Table Talk. Really nice to know that you enjoy that. Okay, sorry, M. Olson, back to your question about uh, starting your own channel. So yes, if you feel a compulsion, you want to do it, do it. Now, here's the question, really. Why do you want to do it? If you want to do it because, let's say, in five years' time, you want to be doing it as a full-time job, if that's your motivation, there's nothing wrong with that motivation, but I would tell you that that's a very difficult thing to just make happen. If your motivation is, I have games I need to talk about, I have feelings about this hobby, I have something I want to share, that's a good motivation because it doesn't matter how many views you get. It doesn't matter whether you become an overnight sensation or not. You'll be accomplishing your goal by just making the content. Now, if it turns out that what you're saying and what you're doing and the way you're expressing it connects with an audience and people go, I really like what this person has to say and I care about what they have to say, then the audience might grow. And that might help continue to motivate you to do it. But one of the things I recognized early on with my own uh, work in, on the channel was no one owes me anything. And if I make videos and people don't watch or they don't care for it, that's okay. Maybe what I'm doing is enjoyable for me, but it's not enjoyable for the people who are watching, or not as, not as enjoyable for the people who are watching. Or maybe it's only enjoyable to a small subset. If I'm happy with that audience I have, then great, keep doing it for that audience. But if you're looking for kind of growth and I want my channel to keep growing and I want to have a million subscribers someday, again, nothing wrong with those ambitions, but you may find it discouraging when you launch your channel and you spent an entire free weekend that you had making a video and two people watch it. 
and one of the people who watches leaves a mean comment, criticizing your audio or something. You know, so I would I would seriously evaluate why you want to do it. But there are new people making board game media all the time, doing incredible work and becoming noticed, and their channels are growing. Our family plays games just recently, like a relatively new channel. They're doing wonderful work. I love watching their channel. They're new, so they're, they're, like, is there any room for them? Yeah, turns out there is, right? Uh, but again, there's no like magic formula. You do this, and then you'll have success and have everything you want, right? That's there's no guarantee of that. But I hope that was a, sort of a helpful answer. I don't know if it was, but I hope hope it was. Uh, Korath sixteen writes. It's Jonathan Williams from Gen Con 50. Glad to have met you, and I'm proud to call you an inspiration. Hope to see you again in the future. I have to be careful reading these out loud. I'm very self. <laughs> when you say nice things like that, and I just kind of steamroll into reading them, I get. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Corey. That that's uh, very nice of you to say, and I appreciate that. And I, I, thanks, thanks for the kind uh, super chat donation. That means a lot. Thank you for being here at the live show. Um, it's it's a funny thing, you know, because I'm technically down here alone in my basement. And yet I'm not, right? Because I'm here with all of you and we're having this exchange of information and sharing of ideas and, uh, and people are supporting the channel here through this. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a special thing. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's, let's uh, come down here to another question. I might be getting cl- close here to the, the bottom of the question. Or actually, you two might just be having trouble <laughs> getting to the bottom of the question. I think that's what's happening. Oh, gosh, it just did a big jump. I think I lost. Oh, no. So Lee Waters, there's a, there's, a, there's a super chat earlier from Lee. Lee, if you're still watching, I, I want you to know I didn't miss it. Is he going to say anything that's going to make me feel self-conscious? <laughs> Lee, Lee, thank you for the kind words. Um, and he says you found your way back learning Small World, and uh, you've, you've been enjoying it ever since. Well, thank you. Thanks for that, Lee. I'm glad. I'm always happy. You know, people, we make a lot of videos, or I make a lot of videos on the, on the show that are not like appointment viewing. You're not going to watch every tutorial that I make. Probably not. Uh, you'll pick and choose the games you want to learn about. Maybe something will catch your eye. But I really appreciate the people kind of know Watch It Played is here and they come back to it when they want to. And I also hope that we can create more types of videos that you will come back for every time. I think that's one of the special things in the top tens that we're doing. And the news show that we do, they're short, they're quick. We hope to have uh, some fun entertainment in there along with information so that you can walk away, either have a laugh or learn something new. And it's something to keep coming back for every time. Even though the t- tutorials, you might come for some and not for everything. Oh my goodness, I think, yeah, I think it just like loaded up a bunch of questions that weren't in here earlier. Um, oh my goodness. I think, wow, oh wow, I'm so far behind on the questions. But I'm enjoying, I'm very happy to be answering the questions at the pace I'm doing. All right, we are, we are an hour in. I will, I will go a few more. I'll go a few more because, wow, people have been really generous with their questions. Steam Park. Someone said it. Steam Park. You're right. That is another theme park game. Baron Park. Candyland. What a great answer, Jackie. Candyland is a theme park game going back to when we did... Uh, we're asking questions about theme park games. Wow. Someone's saying Shovel is the best. <laughs> wow. I'm really back in the, in the comments now. So Matt Carvistrom asks, what's your favorite food drink with pumpkin in it? Pumpkin pie. 100%. You know what? There's certain pies I only want homemade. Apple pie? I only want homemade from either my mother or my mother-in-law. Best pie. I'm sure probably pretty much any mother can make a good apple pie. I'm not saying it's exclusively a mother thing. I'm just telling you from my experience. My mother and my mother-in-law have made the best apple pies I've ever had. When I buy it in the store or get in a restaurant, ugh, gross. So I've been spoiled. Pumpkin pie, on the other hand, homemade or store-bought, generally pretty good. I have to say, the store bot's raised its game there. Okay. <laughs> Cities of Splendor is more expensive than the... Question. Cities of Splendor is more expensive than the base game. Do you think it's worth getting? That is an interesting question because it's a question I get on, uh, on occasion. I usually have this sort of vague, probably uh, annoying answer to it. But I'm going to give it here on a live show where it's a kind of a more broader answer. Um, I never answer questions about is something worth getting? I don't answer it because, particularly when it comes to like a game, first of all, there's like multiple layers of problems here. One is, I don't know if it's a game you would like or not. There's games I love that other people hate and games that I dislike that other people love. So that's why I'm very cautious about expressing my opinions on games most times. In the live show, on other people's platforms, hey, I have opinions and I don't mind sharing them. And that's something I've tried to sort of loosen up a little bit in some of the other formats. I avoid it in the tutorials and other places like that. But 
Here I can be a little more open and free with that. On the other hand, especially when it comes to the questions of worth, is it worth it? Everyone's financial situation is different, like wildly different. For someone who might be able to afford one or two games a year, that question takes on a very different uh, life or meaning than for someone who's able to buy like hundreds of games a year. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, And I know you, you might be able to say, well, yeah, but Rodney, all things being equal. But just things aren't equal. And it's really hard for me to get my head in, into a space where I could even tell you this expansion will be worth it to you. Do you know what I'm saying? And I know that like lots of people try to offer those kinds of solutions to people all the time. You should get this game. You shouldn't get that game. And this expansion's fantastic. This one fixes something that's broken. And I'm so glad there's people who are free and very liberal with their opinions about that because I often listen to those people and it can be very helpful. But I tell you, I'm not comfortable in that space. I, I just get very uncomfortable. And anyone who's asked me, any of my close friends who've asked me for opinions on games will tell you the same thing. It's like pulling teeth because I get, I start wanting to quantify everything because I'm afraid of giving a bad answer. I don't want you to buy a game that I've told you is amazing and you get home and play it and you're like, this wasn't amazing. What was he talking about? Well, it was amazing for me. I I don't know how to make it amazing for you. you All right. Uh, I'm going to have missed some questions. Wow. 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 Oh my goodness. Jackie wants to know who's the boss. (laughs) <laughs> I, that's very vague. I don't know, Jackie. Who is the boss? Sometimes I think you're the boss, Jackie, because the number of times that you've put some insidious statement or comment in a live stream chat that I have then gone and done afterwards, sometimes it makes me think you're the boss. All right. <laughs> Rachel Bear would like to know what's it like to live where Anne of Green Gables takes place. It's very lovely. Prince Edward Island is a lovely place to live. Um, and... I like the Anna Green Gables story. I grew up watching the movies. I've read the books. Um, did not love the Netflix series, but only because it was such a departure from the books. I think now that I know what the show is, I could go back into watching it and be okay with it. But I was really actually hoping for a very micro like look at the book series. And it was, they wanted to tell their own stories, which that doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. But it just wasn't what I was looking for at the time. So, and with an E is the Netflix series. But, uh, yeah, no, it, it's, a, it's a lovely story. It's a, it's a heartwarming story. It, there's one part in that story that makes me cry every time, and, uh, and it's great. And, and living in Prince Edward Island is lovely. It's not, it doesn't look like the angry Green Gables world all the time, um, but there are areas of that island, of the island, that definitely do. Jordan Morris would like to know, can you say the word card again? Well, there you go. I just did. Card. Or curd, as some people think I'm saying it. Uh, let's see... Raphael Arias would like to know, are you part of any hidden special group that play test upcoming uh, high tier games? No, I'm not and I wouldn't want to be. Sometimes I will get asked to play test an upcoming game. I don't, there's a couple things. I don't really have the time um, to do that. Like if I have time, I'm going to be working on a published game if I have the time to to work on on something. Uh, And I also don't really have the interest. There are some people who really love play testing games, giving their feedback, offering suggestions, thinking about game design. And I am very content to let other people do that part of it. And I would like to come in when the game's more or less polished, presented, the world building is done, the art's all there, the quality of the components is finished, and kind of jump in at that point. And then sometimes I kind of do put on my playtester hat. I go, well, why did you do things that way? This rule isn't very clear. You know, typically my concerns and criticisms come in after the fact. Monique is here. Hi, Monique. Nice to see you. Uh, Monique, game freak, geek girl is here. There might be other Moniques in here as well, but that, <laughs> that's the one I'm saying hi to right now and just noticed. Uh, okay. Wow. So Joe would like to know, what's your favorite abstract strategy game to play with your wife? Crokinole? <laughs> is that an abstract strategy game? It's an abstract dexterity game. Yeah, I think that's probably the one because we don't really play chess and checkers. We used to. We used to play uh, backgammon and chess. I haven't played backgammon in so long I, could, I wouldn't even be able to tell you the rules now. Now, uh, Lena Kim asks, uh, or Lena Kim? Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. Lena Kim? Sorry, I'm mispronouncing your name. I apologize. Here's your question. Do you sleeve all your games? No, I do not. I used to sleeve pretty religiously and I think it's... I always feel bad. I don't want to like anyone who sleeves all your games. I'm not making, I'm not criticizing what you do. You treat your games the way you want. I feel like it's kind of overdoing it personally. Um, there are certain games where I shuffle, the shuffling is like constant, it must be done, like a deck building game or a game where you build a deck and you're constantly shuffling. In those cases, sometimes I want to sleeve, not necessarily to protect the games, 
but because I find actually sle uh, shuffling sleeve cards to be a little easier. Marvel Champions, I took to sleeving uh, Luke's deck that he's been playing with, because he's been playing with the same hero over and over again. I haven't. I've noticed his cards are losing a little bit of their finish. They're not shuffling as easily. So that's a case where I'm, I sleeved it. I actually sleeved Dune Imperium, a deck building game, which I really like, and I do kind of want... I just, I don't like this, uh, hey, we need to keep all the games perfect all the time. I don't want to be, uh, I don't, I don't want to be burdened by that feeling all the time. I don't mind if there's some wear and tear in my game, so I'm personally trying to push back against that. But again, if you're the kind of person who loves to sleeve and protect every square inch of your games, go for it. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't want you to think, I think that's silly or something. It's just not something, I'm trying to get away from that myself personally. All right, coming down to some more questions. Skipple, Skip, Skipples would like to know, I'm new to the live show. What should I expect? Well, if you joined at the beginning, that's kind of what you'd expect. And now if you're here at the end, this is also what to expect. Usually we do some Q&A. Sometimes we play a game in the live show. I have a game I wanted to play, but I knew with our special guest appearing and a contest draw to do that I should maybe save that for a later live show. So maybe the next one we'll actually play a game together. Kabuki Kid would like to know the best thing you've read recently for pleasure. The best thing I read recently for pleasure was... Here is Real Magic by Nate Staniforth. Fantastic. I mean, huh. if you like magic, not magic the gallery, but like magic tricks and stuff, it might appeal to you there. If you like reading about someone's like kind of life history, how they got their career started, um, someone on a quest for wonder, and sort of just learning and discovering more about that, great, great, great book. Uh, and a great magician. Brock would like to know, how do you feel about deck building video games like Slay the Spire or Darkest Dungeon? I love Slay the Spire. I got stuck in that rabbit hole for a while. Uh, I'm, I've broken it, thankfully. <laughs> I, I played that one out, but I really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to try now, because we're in the last 15 minutes of the live show. I'm going to try to speed round as many of these questions as possible. I'm going to try. I'm terrible at this. Okay. Douglas Stewart would like to know, how often do you kickstart games? Are, you, are there any you're really uh, looking forward to? I don't kickstart games super frequently, but I'm going to quickly... Okay, so so much for um, <laughs> speed rounding this. I'm going to see if I can find... Someone's going to yell right now, don't type your password in on screen. No, you're right, you're right, you're absolutely right. I'm going to try not to do that. Let's see if... If I can remember my password. Every time I do this, I can't remember my password. It never works, and I never actually am able to... Oh, I got in. It's a miracle. Okay, let me see if I can tell you what I've backed recently. So, I backed currently ongoing Kabuto Sumo board game. Looks super fun, fantastic. Backed that. Uh, some magic stuff. Um, our Innermost Thoughts, which is a, a mostly solo zine of small RPGs, which was, I thought was very clever. The Terraforming Mars Big Box with 3D tiles, I backed that. The Seer Gabal Gaming Podcast. Uh, I backed them for 2020. Ankh, Gods of Egypt. Uh, the Blacklist Miniatures Fantasy Series 1. Chronicles of Crime Millennium Series. Pax Premier Reprint. Marvel United. Inspire's End. There's others, but those are the most recent ones uh, that I backed. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, is that a lot? I, I feel like I used to back a lot more. I find I'm more content to wait until the game releases, and if I don't get all the Kickstarter extras, I'm generally okay with that. Sometimes if a game's really great, though, I was like, oh, I wish I had all the extras. That was like uh, Blood Rage for me. I, I love that game so much that afterwards I, I hunted down all the extras I could find for it. Okay, now it's speed round. Starting now. Starting now. Speed round. Okay, okay. Can I, can I find questions and can I speed round it? <laughs> um, were there any games from Spiel Digital that you're excited for? Asks Chad Hill. Yes, uh, Red Cathedral. That one caught my eye, and I saw Suze Sheldon talking about that today. What is, was there anything else? I'm blanking, so I don't want to slow things down. That's one that, that jumped out at me. Um, okay, going down, going down, getting through here, seeing lots of great talks. I love when people are talking back and forth to each other. I think I saw Matthew Jude pop in here. Hey, Matthew, good to see you. i got to get Matthew Jude on one of these live shows. Coming up, Matthew, if you're still here, be warned. I'm going to hoodwink you into joining me for one of these live shows. Maybe we can play a game together with everybody. That'd, that'd be fun, right? Right, Matthew? Right, right? <laughs> Let's do it. 
Uh, <laughs> Linda Kim would like to know, what game that don't exist would you whiskey... Oh, what game that doesn't exist do you wish existed? You know what? That is something I don't really think about ever. Maybe it's a lack of imagination, or maybe it's because 3,000 games release a year now. Like, there's so many games, I can't keep up with the games that are releasing. So I'm never like thinking, oh gosh, what do I wish existed? You know, uh, I can't even think of a reprint of a game I would like. I'm sure other people have loads of answers for this, but I don't feel like I have them. Oh, there's been another, another super chat. Let me just quickly jump on that. Matthew uh, Broussard, I don't see a note with it. Matthew, thank you very much for the super chat. I want to thank everybody who takes the time to support and donate here during the live shows. It's very encouraging. If you're watching and you're not able to super chat or donate, that's fine too. I'm just, I'm glad you're here, but I, I want to say a special thanks and appreciation to the people who do support the show this way. It's very special and, and, and very encouraging. Thank you. All right, let me just uh, jump down here to another question. Uh, Rocky Dog would like to know, how, are, how am I? Well, I'm doing very fine. Thank you. <laughs> I really enjoy these live shows and I miss when I haven't done them in a while, and then when I do one, I'm like, this is what I miss so much. It's, it's really enjoyable for me. I hope it's enjoyable for you watching as well. Now, unfortunately, the whole thing just jumped. It jumped. It jumped crazy far down the list. Uh, where was everything? <laughs> Fudgeon would like to know, any tips on ordering ships? Ships. Shorts. Shorts? Shirts. <laughs> I got new glasses. They're progressives. Still working on, you know, where I have to look to keep things in focus. Can you tell? Any tips on ordering shirts? Yes. Uh, double check the sizes before you confirm. Uh, M. Olson, thank you very much for the super chat. I'm glad you found the answer insightful to your, to your question. I'm glad that you're enjoying the content. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, also, I'm just going to say, I'm seeing some names I recognize. Gil, I want to say hi to Gil. I want to say hi to uh, John Detmer. I see you in there. I see non-interesting name. I see Jackie. I see Matthew Jude in here. Uh, lovely seeing familiar faces. Solo Play Gamer, hello to you. James C., hi to you. <laughs> nice seeing familiar faces and some faces I haven't seen before or names I don't recognize. Cora Lou, good to see you. And of course, thank you for your question earlier. Mark Livergood, hello to you. Benjamin Nicholson, how you doing, Ben? Nice to see you. Barat uh, Bardwaj, sorry if I'm mispronouncing uh, your name. Nice to see you. Question here, when can we see a new gameplay video? It's been a long time, hasn't it, uh, since we've had a gameplay video. Believe it or not, I know I've been saying this for a long time. I am working on a solution for that. I'm still working on it. And when I get that solution, boy howdy, we're all going to be happy. <laughs> so let me keep going down here. Andrew Hagel, hello to you. Jade Dragon 272 Okay, we're getting down here. I think I might be getting to the end of the questions. This is exciting. Corey, hi, Corey. Hi, Roy, Canada. Nice to see you in here as well. I've seen you chatting. Zach Stewart, hello. Okay, boy. Meeple University, hi, Stella. I imagine it's Stella. Uh, maybe it's the whole Meeple University team there. I got to the bottom of the questions. We did it, everybody. You know what that means? That means we can do this giveaway. I haven't forgotten we are going to do the giveaway. <laughs> Oh, Kabuki Kid has a question. So this will be the last question of the night. Are you an early adopter when it comes to game consoles? Any plans on getting a PlayStation 5 early or at all? Sometimes. Sometimes I'm an early adopter. Personally, I have not been playing video games with any consistency at all for the last year. I got a little bit into Call of Duty, the last Call of Duty, and I did get kind of like stuck into that for a while. But most of my gaming happens uh, on a, on a uh, tablet. Or phone. It's uh, kind of the toilet time gaming, if you will. <laughs> More information than you needed, probably. But yeah, I don't, I don't do a lot of sitting at my computer playing games, because if I have that kind of time, generally I'm like, you know what, I have uh, some games in my collection I'd like to get played, or at least learn how to play. And so that's usually what I'll, I'll gravitate towards. Or I might like, hey, I want to learn a new magic trick, or some other kind of hobby thing. So I, I've mostly um, broken away from playing, playing video games. But my son, Luke, he, he still enjoys video games a lot, plays every day. And uh, he's been thinking about the PlayStation 5, but he's not, he doesn't seem concerned with being an early adopter for it. Okay, so just so you know, the giveaway, which we talked about at the beginning of the episode, which if you missed, I'm going to give you, if you missed it, I'm going to give you five, mm, five more seconds or five more minutes. I don't know, maybe a minute. Giving away this physical version of the Kickstarter <sighs> elements for the digital Kickstarter for Blood Rage. 
okay? <laughs> Google it, you'll, you'll find it. This is not the core game. This is not enough to play. So if you don't have Blood Rage, I'd say be decent and don't like enter this. Or maybe you're thinking about getting Blood Rage. In that case, fine, go for it. You'll find a link in the description of this video. Click on the link. You have to put in a few bits of information, like your email and that, so if you win, I can, I can contact you. I don't use that information for anything else. And you also have to put a code word in. The code word is the last name of the designer for Blood Rage. All right, I'm gonna give everyone one more minute in case you joined in a little late. Just be nice to everybody because you've all been very, very nice to me tonight. So I'm going to give you a chance to enter that and then I'm gonna do the draw for that and then we're gonna sign off and let everyone go on their way. I hope you enjoyed joining me for another Halloween, another Halloween, another live show. It had a little bit of a Halloween theme to it. Your questions certainly had some Halloween themes and we had a lovely uh, early guest. If you missed our guest at the beginning of the show, uh, go back and, and watch the beginning and, and you'll see who, uh, who joined us. Very, very unlikely guest. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd love to have, uh, have that guest come back again sometime, maybe. Maybe next Halloween. All right. I'm not seeing any other questions, so I feel like I've given everyone a pretty decent chance to rush and enter the contest if they'd like. And Coralou, very nice. Coralou commenting, yep, no intention of getting Blood Rage. I didn't enter so that those who want it have a better chance. Very thoughtful. That's the... That's the kind of people we want in this community. I appreciate that. Thank you. Chad Hill. Ah, I put in the first name. <laughs> Chad, that's too bad. Chad, I'm going to give you a second. If you go back in and you put in the last name, okay, it'll, it'll, it'll put you through. All right, Chad? So go ahead and jump back in there. If you, if you put in the wrong answer, you, you won't be notified, but it won't take your entry. So go in there, put in your uh, email address, your name, and the correct last name, and you'll be entered. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Um, Josh here saying, Rodney, I met you a couple years ago at Origins, and I just wanted to say thanks for being... Thank you, Josh, for the kind... kind. You, you said some nice things there. I don't want to say it loud. It makes me self-conscious. But I appreciate that, Josh. It was very nice to meet you. You know, at, at the conventions, it's, it's interesting, right? Because, uh, of course, some people might, might recognize me from, from the, the show. And, of course, I, I won't necessarily recognize you. And so you might think, oh, it's, you know, I'm bothering Rodney or, or uh, interrupting the flow of his day or what have you. But it's an interesting thing being at a convention. I think for all of us, all of us experience that sense of being away from home, right? And maybe even listening, missing loved ones back at home. And you're, you're in the sea of strangers. And it is, it is very nice and, and comforting to have, you know, a human interaction with somebody and to, and to know that there is something kind of shared there between the two of you. You know, I know you like games, whoever I'm running into, you know you like games. You're familiar probably with my work. And there's something we probably can talk about there and connect on. And I, I leave those exchanges feeling heartwarmed and, and, um, and a little more connected in general. So, so it, was, it was very nice to meet you too. I'm sure of it. M. Olson saying, I live in Canada, so shipping shouldn't be so bad. I see you're trying to advocate maybe for winning. <laughs> All right. I think everyone's had a great time. Uh, uh, travel risk, I see you're leaving. Uh, thanks for joining the stream. I'm going to do the draw right now. And I'm going to show everybody. Now, unfortunately, the camera will be out of focus, and I moved the other camera away. So uh, that one we can't see anymore. But, oh, I think you might... I don't know. You might be able to get a sense of it. All right, here we go. Uh, wow, that snow never really melted. Okay, we're going to draw our winner. And our winner is number eight... Uh, Barat B, you are the winner of the physical stretch goals to the digital Kickstarter for Blood Rage. Hey, I think I finally got it. That's a pretty succinct way of saying it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to save you as a winner. Now, what that means is that I'm going to send you an email either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, I have a little bit of cleanup to do here, but I will send you an email. Keep an eye out for that. Maybe check your junk folder too because it's probably going to say something like watch it played contest and that might go to your, uh, your junk folder. But keep an eye on that because I'll be asking you for your full shipping uh, and mailing address, and then I'll send uh, this out to you just as soon as I'm able to get it into the, uh, the post for you. And I wanted to say again, a very, a very special thanks. Um, there's a couple of very generous donations, Keen Anvil and Ken uh, Coaston, and that that's really going to help with the shipping. I said earlier, like, the shipping on these things are, are quite expensive. And not just the shipping on this, but when I do other uh, giveaways like this, those kind of donations are really thoughtful and, and really do help kind of cover those, those costs, which can sometimes be kind of outrageous sometimes, especially when they have to be shipped maybe somewhere quite far away. 
Look, we did it. We got to the end of another It's Live live show. Did I forget anything? I remember the important things, I think. I'm so glad, again, that all of you were able to join me and, and take the time of your day to be here. You could be a lot of different places, and you took the time to be here, and that really means a lot to me. I hope you enjoyed some, some conversations, some thoughts about games, and maybe even a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> A little bit of silliness along the way as well. But I just want to say to everybody who's watching, let's see how smoothly I can do this. Until next time, thanks for watching.